there being placed for all amateur radio operators. Everybody's welcome to check in. You do not have to be a member of any club, organization, group, or association to participate in this net. All you need is a valid FCC license. This net meets each and every Friday evening at 8 p.m. This repeater is a PL 114.8 plus offset. You need to add that program into your radio in order to have access to the repeater. For those of you who may be using older radios that do not have PL capability or the PL on your radio is not working properly, you can check in the Friday night fun net by using the repeater output frequency, the straight 195 simplex. Uh, if I hear you, I will check you into uh, the net. That's how... Uh, that's how Scott K9YI in Monroe gets into the, the net there, used to the uh, simplex. Uh, if you're on the six, if you can hear the repeater, but you can't get into it due to conditions, or you're too far away from it, you can give me a call on the Friday Night Fund at the Central Hotline. That's area code 815-232-FNFN. 232-3636, local report number. I'll take your check-in over the phone, but try to check in on the uh, radio first. Uh, this is an independent net. We are a, a community net. We are also a... Uh, a, a, a non a non club net on a non club repeater. So uh, okay. Okay, I already have one uh, at early check in. That's a uh, Jamie W nine J T C. He overdid. He said it was uh, painting and all that stuff. But he got a little tuckered out, so he's going to go up and take a break. So he uh, whatever. I told him he can listen to the net on the Facebook page. So uh, okay. Uh, here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to take short time on mobile stations. We, as I said, we had one early bird check-in. We're going to take short time on mobile stations. Uh, if you have uh, family time or you want to rather concentrate your drive, you got something else going on, you can't stay for the net, we'll take your short time on mobile uh, check-ins. Uh, if you have traffic, we'll do your traffic right away. After we get done with uh, a short time on mobile stations, we'll take general check-ins. First, we'll take general check-ins from Northern Illinois. Next, we'll take general check-ins from Southern Wisconsin. After that, we'll take general check-ins from anywhere in Northern Illinois or Southern Wisconsin. When you check in, state whether or not you have traffic. Your traffic consists of breakfast, ampest, bike rides, or uh, marathons. So, uh, okay. Then we will do our regular features. We'll do the tech net. Are you having a problem with your power supply or amplifier? What kind of an antenna do you want to put up on your tower? You, uh, you have technical questions, you're free, feel free to ask them on the set. We'll try to help them. Somebody will hopefully will help you out. We'll do the uh, W9 Gene Duncan uh, DX corner in honor of our late great friend and colleague, Gene Duncan, W9 GD, the king of DX. Every time uh, he checked in his net, he always had a DX report. Then we'll have our swap net. If you have any items to buy, sell, trade, or want related to hobbies, ramp trade, or, or computers, uh, Go ahead and put it, uh, put it out over the air. We'll see what, what we can do. The topic tonight, this was suggested by Larry, K9KZT. How do you convince your friend, your best buddy, to uh, go, go out and study for his uh, ham radio license? That's what uh, we'll talk about that uh, uh, tonight. I had 38 check-ins last week. Uh, I think we had two hour, 20 minute net. So uh, we'll see how things uh, go. We'll see how many checks we get. We'll see how long we go. Okay. With all uh, the so-called formalities out of the way, let's get underway. Hey, we're not a formal net anyway. <laughs> Do we have any short time on both stations? We're not checking. Please call now. KC9GCR. Here's AA9SF. Scott, South Rockford. Checking in a short time, and uh, Jim, I wonder if you've heard anything about Mel. You might pass that along. AA9SF. AA9SF, Scott, at the beautiful Kishwaukee River Yacht Club, South of Robert. I, yes, I did. I did hear some information. I called one, I talked to one of his family members. He is still in the OSS OS St. Anthony Hospital. He was supposed to have been transferred to a rehab facility last uh, Friday, but apparently they had some problem with the paperwork. They don't know when he will be transferred, but this is the latest information that I have, uh, Scott. Yeah, I was looking for my microphone. Yeah, okay, well, paperwork uh, snafu. And I wonder how often that happens. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Well, I was supposed to 
could have over Belvedere a week earlier, but uh, I couldn't because of the bed bug situation here. So uh, it kept me. So uh, as a, all stuff happens, what are you going to do? If I find out any more information, I'll certainly let you and every everybody else uh, know. So uh, find out at least what uh, rehabilitation he's going to do we, so we can send him some cards and letters and uh, get well cards and maybe we can get him in HD so at least he can listen to these, uh, the Rockford area nets anyway. Okay, sounds good, Jim. Sounds good. I'll catch you later at 89SF. 7-3, Scott. Thank you. Thank you for checking in. Uh, I'll uh, 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 talk to you later. 89SF, Scott, in the beautiful Kishwaukee River Yacht Club, south of uh, Rockford. Okay. Uh, this is a short time of mobile. Any more short time of mobile stations want to check in? Please call now. AC9NW, Tom and Roscoe. Short time, no traffic. AC9NW, uh, Tom and Roscoe, got, got, you, uh, got you checked in. Uh, thank you for checking in, Southern. You have a good evening. Enjoy your weekend. Any more short time of mobile station while checking? Please call now. KC9QPL, Paul and Low Spark. Uh, short time, no traffic. KC9QPL, Paul and uh, Low Spark. Okay, Bob, got you checked in. Thank you for checking in. Enjoy your evening and enjoy your weekend. And we'll talk to you on the Monday Night Net this coming uh, uh, Monday night. Hope we will be on 6 1. Okay, uh, I'll be net control at that, that, that time, too. Any more short time of mobile stations? Friday Night Fun Deck. Please call now. QDP, uh, uh, Rick and uh, Rockford Short Time. Okay, uh, Rick, thank you for checking in. Have a good evening. Enjoy your weekend. There was another station that, uh, that checking in at the same time Rick was. Other station, come back, please. KD9 SBA, Short Time Mobile. KD9 SBA, uh, KD9 Small Business Administration. <laughs> Matt, down in uh, Stillman Valley, Ogle County, Mobile. We got you checked in. Short time, Southery. Have a good evening. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you for checking in. Any more short time on mobile stations? Like checking the Friday Night Fun Day. Please call now. KL7JAB, Bill in Rockford. No traffic. Short time. KL7JEB, Bill and Rockford, got you checked in short time. 73, have a good evening, enjoy your weekend, thank you for checking in. Any more short time on mobile stations would like to check in? Please call now. <laughs> Unable to copy, last station trying to check in, you might want to increase your power or change the location. Let's try that one more time, please. I'll tell you what, give me a call on the Friday Night Fun Net Hotline, area code 815-232-FNFN, 232-3636. I'll take your check in over the phone, but I'm not able to copy you at all. Uh, thanks for trying. We're going to move on. Any more short time of both stations I'd like to check in? Please call now. Okay, we had a total of six short time stations checked in, so we'll now move to general check ins. At this time, I will take general check ins from Northern Illinois with Friday Night Fun Net. Please call now. Golf for Charlie Nine, Golf Oscar, Larry and Rockton. KD9, HKX, Larry and Roscoe. Nine 
KD9, MED, Mike and Rochelle, recording. This is KC9 GCR with the Friday Night Fun Deck on the K9 RFD repeated around for transmitting for Friday Night Fun Deck Central and Freeport. He got four stations checked in. AC9 GO, uh, Larry and Rock, and Rockton, Rob Rock Board Press got you checked in. I'll get back to you in a few minutes around here. Thank you for checking in. KD9 HKX, so, uh, Larry and Roscoe. I've got you checked in, Larry. I'll get back to you in a few minutes around here. Well, thank you for checking in. K9 KZT, Larry and Rockford, the KFCW. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna talk about the, the uh, uh, subject matter that you uh, suggested. We're gonna talk about how you get your friends to stay for your, get their, stay for the ham radio license. Got you checked in, uh, Larry. I'll get back to you a few minutes around there. Well, thank you for checking in. KD9 MED, Mike in Rochelle, who's recording the Friday Night Fun Net. For future uh, rebroadcasts on the Friday Night Fun at the uh, uh, Central uh, Facebook page. Okay, sounds uh, sounds good. Thank you for, for checking in, uh, uh, Mike. We'll talk about the uh, uh, recording and uh, the later on during the net. Any more stations from Northern Illinois wishing to check in the Friday Night Fun Net? Please call now. KD9 MAP, Kerry and Rockford. BX9 RLT. I uh, picked up two more stations. KD9 MEP, Kerry and uh, uh, Rockford. Uh, we'll get back to you in a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you for checking in. And uh, WX9 RLT, Ricky and Love Spark. We also uh, got you checked in. I'll also get back to you in a few minutes around table. And, and thank you for checking in. Any more general check-ins from Northern Illinois with the Friday Night Fun Net? Please call now. And SPJ Scott and Rockford. And I'm SPJ Scott in uh, Rockford. I've got you checked in, Scott. I'll get back to you a few minutes around table. And thank you for checking in. Any more general check-ins from Northern Illinois with the Friday Night Fun Net? Please call now. Okay, no more tickets for Northern Illinois. We had a good turnout. We'll see if we can get just a good turnout from Southern Wisconsin. Uh, any stations from Southern Wisconsin wishing to check in the Friday Night Fun Net? Please call now. KC9 RGG Norm in Orfordville, Wisconsin. KC9RGG, Norman Orbitville, Wisconsin. Got you checked in, Norm. We'll get back to you a few minutes around. Well, thank you for checking in. Any more general check-ins from Southern Wisconsin with Friday Night Fun Net? Please call now. Oh, well, this Friday Night Fish, Friday Night in Wisconsin. You know where everybody's at. Your favorite bar, restaurant, tavern, and your catfish, buffalo, carp, bullhead, northern pike, walleye, mus muskie, or crappie. Those of you in Milwaukee area, you're eating your bully sausages, hot dogs, brats, kielbasa, and bronze right. You're probably having tailgating parties out at, uh, well, I still call it Miller Park. It's American Family Field, but I still refer to it as Miller Park. The Brewers are playing the Washington Nationals. Uh, Good, uh, good crowd there. I'm sure those parking lots are busy with those tailgaters. And of course, your cheese lovers read some of that famous Wisconsin cheese. Okay, at this time, are there, do we have any stations from anywhere in northern Illinois or southern Wisconsin would like to check in the Friday night fun net? Please go now. check-ins later on during the day. We're going to go to the traffic portion now. I do have some traffic to pass along. This is uh, reference to a, a, 
disaster, the situation in Haiti. The uh, IARU, in conjunction with the ARRL, has asked all ham radio operators on HF to avoid using the following frequencies. 14.330 megahertz in the 20 meter band, 7.150 megahertz in the 40 meter band, and 3.750 megahertz in the 75 meter band. They want uh, the hams to uh, avoid using those frequencies because they want to keep those frequencies open for emergency use. Remember the uh, terrible earthquake which took place last Saturday and of course the tropical storm of grace which uh, went through. Again, I'll repeat these frequencies. Uh, 14.330 megahertz in the 20 meter band, 7.150 megahertz in the 40 meter band, and 3.750 uh, megahertz in the 75 meter band. Uh, IARU in conjunction with ARRL wants those uh, people to avoid those frequencies. They want that those uh, they want to reserve those frequencies for emergency use with the situation, the disaster relief efforts in Haiti due to the earthquake and the tropical storm Grace. Okay, that's my traffic. Does anybody wish to? Uh, uh, does anybody else have any traffic you'd like to pass along for the net? Please go ahead. with the, uh, oh, I got, I got the wrong paper here. One moment, please. We did the traffic. Now, uh, we're going to go ahead and do the tech net. Do you have any, uh, are you having a problem with your uh, power supply or amplifier? What kind of an antenna do you want to put up on your tower? Do you have any technical questions you'd like to bring before the net? Uh, you're, please feel free to that, ask those questions. And we'll try to answer them. Anybody have any technical questions? Please go ahead. Okay. Well, I guess that was taken care of during the uh, health and tech net last uh, last night on this uh, repeater. So okay. Uh, we're now going to go ahead with the W9 Gene Duncan and DX corner. This is an honor of our late great friend in the college, Gene Duncan, W9GD, King of DX. Every time he checks this net, he always had a DX report. Does anybody have any DX reports they'd like to pass along at this time? Please go ahead. KD9MAP. Okay, Carrie, we got you. What do you got for us? Thank you, Jimmy. Good evening, everybody. This is KD9MAP. Uh, last Saturday morning, I uh, raised up my west antenna. I raised it. I've been running it about 20 feet high, and I raised it up about 35 feet high. So I spent the whole week using just that antenna to see how well I'd do with it. Uh, brief reset. So I got 20 DX QSOs on that antenna this week uh, to 14 countries. Uh, no new countries, but three of the stations were notable for various reasons. The first one was HH2JA, which is Haiti. Uh, I contacted him on Saturday. It was only 30 hours after the earthquake, so I guess it didn't affect him. Brief reset. Later in the week, I uh, contacted VK7XX. I've worked lots of Australian stations, but this is the first one that's on the island of Tasmania. So that gives me a whole nother grid square. Uh, I Google Earthed Tasmania. It looks like a beautiful, beautiful place. I saw some lovely towns there. Free free set. And I worked UA0ZK. Uh, I've got lots of Russian contacts, but this is the first one on the Kamchatka Peninsula. So this is the easternmost Russian contact that I've made. And now, an announcement. Brief reset. 
the North American QSO party sideband uh, is taking place this weekend. And I'm just going to read the time interval here and let you guys do the time conversion. It's 1800 UTC on August 21st to 0600 UTC on August 22nd. So it sounds like it's only 18 hours long. So that's it, guys. Thanks a lot. KD9MAP. This is KD9GCR to Friday Night Fun Night on the K9RV Repeater Robert at transmitting Friday Night Fun Night Central and Freeport. Well, uh, Carrie, thank you very much for making those contacts, especially with, with Haiti. That was, must have been an interesting conversation. Uh, you, uh, the uh, HH2TA uh, uh, and uh, uh, UK is uh, 7XX and Tax Media, Australia, and, and uh, UA or uh, uh, 02K in uh, Kamchatka, Ru Russia. So con congratulations and also bringing in that information about the North American QSO part. I'll have to turn on my HF and ring myself and see what I can find out. Does anybody have any questions for Kerry concerning his DX report? Oh, Jimmy, just to point out, this is all FT8 that I operate, so there's no conversation that takes place. That's what surprised me about the Haiti contact is, you know, you get this big earthquake and this guy's got time to, to do FT8. <laughs> I, just, I just thought it was surprising, but no, there's no, there's no conversation on FT8. KD9MAP. Okay, sounds good. He might have been be living in that, uh, that area of India was not affected because uh, I guess Port au Prince, the capital, was not affected. And uh, so the rest of the uh, that country, so that, that's pretty good. That's great. So he got lucky there. Okay, thank you very much for your uh, uh, DX report there, Kerry. We'll, we'll hear from you in a few minutes during the round table. Okay, does anybody else have any DX reports they'd like to pass along at this time? Okay, as we almost always do, we're going to put down the W9GB. Well, HC for honorary checking, of course, well, that call is now held by Gary. In Crystal Lake, we're on my K9FM uh, uh, L. Maybe he might check in the net later on, but I, I got I got the W9 GD call written down anyway. So, oh, okay. Let's uh, that concludes the DX report. Let's move on. We already did the no tech net traffic one DX report. So now we'll move on with to the swap net. If my papers don't start falling down here. Okay, all lines to be bought, sold, or created must be related to hobbies of RAM traded or computers. All items to be bought, sold, or created must be the property of a possession of a person who wants to get rid of stuff. I mean, branching prices over the earth, but any action should be done either in person or over the telephone. Also, no commercial business of any kind is allowed. Do we have any uh, 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 swap net traffic? Anybody have any swap net traffic this time? Please call now. K9 KZT. K9 KZT, Larry. Uh, uh, K of uh, CW. Okay, Larry, what do you got for us? Well, thank you, Jim. I've got, uh, I want, want to buy um, a uh, handy talkie uh, or a handheld uh, two meter rig. Does not have to have a uh, 440 on it or anything. Like that, uh, or a small uh, mobile type rig that I can use. I just want to use this as a backup. If my regular rig goes down, I want to be able to get to the repeater. So you can contact me at l.lisle at usa.net. l.lisle at usa.net. Please, something easy to program or uh, run. I uh, must have PL tones too, please. Thank you. Back to that, k 9 Okay. Larry, K9KGT is looking for an HT. 
uh, 82 meter uh, rig or, or small or small boat with you will, will do. It's got to be easier to program and it has to have PL tones. Does anybody have any, anybody have any uh, H, 2 meter HTs? It does not have to be 440, just 2 meter. Anybody have any uh, 2 meter HTs that they're not using or they want to get rid of? And please, you are, uh, you are welcome to go back to Larry K9 KGT. Anybody that can help out uh, uh, Larry? Well, okay, Larry. Sorry about that. I wish I hope I hope somebody can uh, contact you that they want to get a hold of you. If anybody wants to make sure they want to get rid of, they're not using. Contact uh, Larry K9 KGT at uh, L dot L I S L E at uh, USA dot net. You want to get rid of an HT? She's desperately desperately looking for one. Okay, Larry. Thank you for bringing that swap net traffic. Does anybody else have any swap net traffic at this time? Kilo 9, Whiskey Ocean Queen. K9 WOQ. Listen, let, let me, let me uh, check you into the uh, net here. Okay, uh, and let me... K nine W O Q. I'm trying to write at the same time. Okay, what do you got for us? I'm looking for a good uh, tuner. If anybody has a tuner for a hundred watt radio, uh, be interested in looking at possible purchase. Okay, sounds good. Does anybody have any tuners that are good tuners that they're not using? They want to get rid of. Uh, please uh, go ahead. You may go direct with the K9 WOQ. Okay, sorry about that, K9 WOQ. How can anybody contact uh, you? Greg at EvansLive.com. It's Greg, G-R-E-G-G, -G -G. Evans. I just made a mistake here, I'm sorry. It's Greg at EvansLive, L-I-V-E, dot com. Okay, anybody has a tuner that they want to get rid of? Uh, contact uh, K9 WOQ at uh, Greg at uh, Evans and I dot uh, uh, com. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, and uh, we'll get. I got you checked in there. We'll get back to you a few minutes for the round table, and thank you for checking in. Does anybody else have any swap net traffic you'd like to pass along? Sounds good. Uh, we do have a swap net uh, portion during the Monday night uh, Rah Rah info net, either on this repeater or on 6 1 repeater Monday evenings at 7 p.m. Here in uh, Freeport, we have our Wednesday evening swap net at uh, 8 p.m. on the 147.390 repeater with the PL 114.8 uh, uh, pulse offset. It runs from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. until all traffic is handled. Okay, before we proceed, this concludes the swap net. Do we have any more stations that would like to check in the Friday night fun at this time? Please call now. Okay. Let's go with, uh, uh, how do you get your best friend, your best buddy, to, uh, your bosom buddy to, uh, uh study for his ham radio license? This was suggested by Larry, K9 KGT, a few weeks ago. Okay, uh, AC9 GO, uh, Larry, the Rod Rod Board President, what's going on with you? What do you say? Uh, KC9 GCR and the group, uh, this is AC9 GO. You know, the best luck I've had is uh, talking to guys that have worked in electronics and 
or played with electronics all their lives, and they d uh, don't realize that you don't have to have a uh, uh, you know Morse code anymore, and uh, some of them just didn't wanna or didn't have the time to study for it or whatever. And I, I know when that uh, first uh, changed, I talked three guys at Barbara Coleman into uh, getting their licenses. And uh, actually one's a silent key now, and uh, I don't know whether either of the other two is active anymore, but uh, we got them started anyhow. That, that's about uh, the only thing I can think of. Uh, uh, I always, uh, you know, try to try to encourage people that uh, have any interest at all, because it's not that difficult to, to uh, get a license anymore. With that, I'm gonna check out of here, Jimmy. Seventy-three HC9GO. That's uh, that sounds good. I'm glad uh, how you did that, uh, Larry. So okay, uh, anybody who works in electronics, I think that'd be great to get their ham radio license. That's good. Okay, hey, thanks for checking the Friday night fun, then, Larry. You have a good evening. Enjoy your weekend. We'll catch you on the Monday night, and that's this coming uh, Monday night. I'll be in that control. Okay, K D nine H K X, Larry and Roscoe. What's going on with you? How do you get your best friend to, to study for their ham radio license? KC9GCR, KD9HKX. Good evening, Jim. Good evening, everyone else on the net. Uh, well, I haven't done it yet. Uh, <laughs> uh, got a couple couple of my friends I've talked to and talked to about it, but uh, one of them uh, is an electronics buff. Uh, in fact, he was an electronics engineer out at uh, uh, Hamilton Sunstrand for a number of years. But uh, uh, There's interest, but I haven't got him to, to do any studying and take the test yet. So, uh, apparently Larry in Rockton knows more about it than I do, because I haven't had much success yet. But I'm still working on them. So, uh, with that, Jim, I'll turn it back to you. KC9GCR, KD9HKX. Okay, Larry, sounds good. Hey, thank you for checking the Friday Night Fun and Enjoy your evening. Enjoy your weekend. And we'll talk to you next, uh, next week or maybe on one of the other nets or so, uh, Oh, well, maybe, hopefully, you'll find somebody or somebody who talk somebody into it. So, okay. Larry, K9KZT, uh, were you in your topic that you suggested to me a few weeks ago? Okay, Larry, what do you say? KC9GCR, Jim, K9TZT here. Thank you, Jim. Uh, well, I, uh, my history with it is a little different because uh, my, uh, I did it in school. And I had fifth graders at the time, and I got uh, over five years, 80 kids to get their ham license. And uh, I just made it part of the curriculum. If you got your ham license, you got an A for the quarter. And if you didn't, I separated the class into two groups. One was going for their ham license, the other going for or just uh, taking our regular electronics class. Uh, so they both had about equally difficult stuff to do. Uh, but anyway, uh, for the ham, uh, with the Morse code, uh, they enjoyed the code, I think. And everybody who stayed with it more than a week passed their code test. That day, and that, those days it was five words a minute for their novice license. And uh, we just had a little bit of five minutes or so of code practice every day. And for the students, were not uh, going for their ham license, uh, when I put earphones on them uh, because uh, otherwise there's just too much trouble with volume levels and stuff like that with the different earphones that I had. And I just sent uh, Morse code to the others right out of learning the radio telegraph code by the ARRL. Hang on. And um, once they kind of got a hang of the letters, I had uh, little transmitters. I, by this time I had uh, several receivers in the room, and if the kid finished his work, he could go to one of the receivers, put on the earphone, and have a miniature transmitter using a color burst crystal out of an old TV set. 
and uh, no antenna really, just a, uh, a couple inches of wire. And another kid could go to another receiver and they could ride two back and forth across the classroom without disturbing anybody. Anyway, that was one way. All right, and for the technical, uh, just the same routine that uh, you do with any, any teaching process, you know. And uh, we had good luck with it. Later on, uh, they made the ham uh, written test so difficult because they added more privileges that uh, it was just beyond kids by that point. The old novice license was really kid friendly. Uh, you just had to know the band limits, you know, had to, had to know what parallel resistors were and series and so forth, a little bit of math, uh, regulations and so forth, things to get on the air safely. And uh, the license was only good for a year and you had to upgrade or get off. And uh, then I had uh, a bunch of old receivers and transmitters, code, novice type stuff, that I would take out to, to their houses so the parents could get an idea if the kid was really interested in this and would stay with it. And we jury rigged some sort of an antenna for them and they could keep those for a month or so and talk to each other because they gave all the same frequency crystal. And I could kind of monitor that and see how they were doing. Anyway, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Back to net control, K9KZT. Yeah, but that was great. Uh, Bill, I used to do it back in school, and that was a that was wonderful. Too bad we don't have that kind of stuff going on in our schools today. That that's for sure. Thank you for uh, checking in, and thank you for uh, suggesting this uh, topic uh, uh, to me. We'll we'll do it just uh, we'll do it justice here. Thank you uh, very much, and for checking the Friday night fun then. Okay, KD9 MED Mike and Rochelle. By the way, he's recording this net. It will be rebroadcast in the future, or the future rebroadcast on the Friday Night Fun Net Facebook page. Uh, what do you say, uh, uh, Mike, how do you get your uh, friends to uh, study for their first ham radio license, to get, get their license? Katie, 9MED, hey, thanks for the question there, Jimmy. Um, I've actually succeeded in getting two friends on the radio. One's a good old Army buddy of mine from way back in the 80s, and another one was a... Uh, co-worker uh in a recent employment um i just talked about it basically uh they saw the videos and they're like wow that's pretty interesting what do i got to do to get on and i just tell them hey i said you know what just take your tech lesson all you got to do is study for it about two three weeks and it's a no-brainer and you'll you'll have your license and you'll probably get about 70 percent of the frequencies right off the bat and uh that's what I do, and uh, I've had a lot of questions uh, asked of me, and I answer as much as I can and uh, point people in the right direction. KD9MED, back to net. Uh, that's great. Well, here's another thing you could do. Get your friends to maybe if, uh, find, if you finally use a scanner or something like that. They can program, give them some of the, the uh, two-meter fre uh, repeater frequencies. You can put them in there, listen to this. They can listen to the various nets uh, around here, especially the, this one, so... Uh, that that'd be that'd be great too. That's that's how a lot of people, like uh, Ricky WX9 RLT, uh, and let let's see, I think uh, uh, Jen uh, uh, and uh, and several uh, several other hams uh, they're, uh, got their lives by they listened to the Friday night fun net on the scanner and they took they uh, that's how they took the pass the test. So okay. Uh, thanks for checking in, uh, Mike, and uh, thanks for uh, recording the net as uh, per usual. That that's great. Uh, thank you for checking in. KD9 MAP, uh, uh, Gary and Rockford. Uh, how do you get your uh, friends at, uh, to get their ham radio license? This is KD9 MAP. Well, I I have terrible powers of persuasion. I don't think I would try to to persuade somebody to do something that they're not intensely interested in already. But to the hypothetical question, how do you op overcome people's objection to the test? A brief reset. First thing I would tell them is it's an easy test. It's multiple choice and it's got canned answers. There's The answers are the same on the study guides as they are on the test. The only difference is that the answers are, are in a different order, that's all. 
There's no math to do because all the answers are canned. They're, they're not going to change the numbers on you from the study guide to the test. Brief reset. The second thing I'd tell them is you can study for it for free. You don't have to buy a study guide or anything like that. You just go to this web address. Ready? A R L exam review dot app spot dot com. Brief reset. That's A R L exam review dot app spot dot com. Register there or you know, sign up, we'll get a username and password for free. And then there's all the questions, there's all the answers, there's the practice exams. You just drill them over and over again, and in no time you'll be ready for the for the technician test. K D nine M A P. That's great. That that's great. Uh, and like uh, and like I told uh, uh, Mike, K D nine M E D. Get your anybody has a scanner they're not using can give it to your friends. Program the uh, uh, local two meter repeaters in there. Just uh, turn them on. Let, let them listen. They can find out for themselves how, uh, how great a, a hobby that this is. That'd be great too. Thank you for checking in and giving us your input there, uh, uh, Kerry. WX9RLT, Ricky in Love's Park. What do you say? How do you get your best buddy to, to uh, get their license? Uh, good evening, Jimmy, and everybody on the net. Uh, not too much going on here, just kind of kicking back and enjoying the weather. Um, you know, kind of like I told you before, the net there, uh, I say bribe them. <laughs> um, I haven't had the uh, the honor of, uh, you know, being an Elmer, um, you know, bringing people into the hobby. A lot of people, you know, I know were already in the hobby, and, you know, Will, he brought me in, so... No, uh, if I had a, a way to do it, though, um, you know, thinking about it, I probably would uh, basically educate them and give them hands-on experience. I can't really give them hands-on experience, so, you know, just kind of have them sit there right next to you as you talk on the radio type of thing and kind of show them the ins and outs and kind of what you can and can't do. And I'm sure, you know, there's something that'll, you know, uh, tickle their feathers is a good way to put it. So, but yeah, long story short, you know, educate them, give them first-hand, uh, first-hand experience, and then you know, one of these days it'll happen. So I'll have to, you know, let you know when that happens. But I had the honor of being Elmerated, but I am not yet an Elmer. So good to hear everybody out there. The BX9 RLT. Back to you, Jimmy. That sounds uh, that 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 sounds good, uh, uh, Ricky. I know you first got this. You became interested by listening on the scanner, and uh, what have you know, and uh, that's what uh, Justin K nine FBO that that six uh, about six years ago he was listening on a, a Friday night fun day I was uh, he was listening on a computer he was trying to find his different frequencies he found one he he didn't even know what ham radio was so after he uh, after he gave a listen he I, I kept giving the phone number he finally called me on the phone and uh, that's the first time I ever talked to him on uh, ever. And uh, he, he he want to know you well you did have an HG he says is it okay if I transmit on at one half one don't do that you don't you just just wait realize not want to start off the last thing you want to do is start off on this hobby on the wrong foot so but uh, that was a I'll never get that guy's license there it was just a couple of days before Christmas 2015 spent it all night on the air okay thank you for checking in there uh, uh, Okay, N9SBJ, Scott, at the uh, Rock River Yacht Club. Are you still with us? Uh, how do you get your friends to study for your license? Uh, Scott, is that you? All I'm getting is mic clips, but no audio. Well, 
Okay, we're going to move on. KZ9RGG, Norm in uh, uh, Orbergo, Wisconsin. What's going on with you? What do you say? How do you get your friends to, uh, uh, to get their ham radio license? KC9GCR, KC9RGG, and to everybody on the net. Uh, let me turn your question around here, Jim, because I haven't convinced anybody to become an amateur, but I'll tell you about the gentleman that convinced me to become an amateur. His name was Dave. His call was N9GQ, and he gave a talk down at the library in uh, Janesville, Wisconsin, I went down there and attended it. He was talking about software-defined radios. And I found it very interesting. And that put me on my track, and I eventually got my license, and now I'm a general. So, uh, that's how I got started in amateur radio. Back to you, Jim, KC9GCR. This is KC9RGG, and I'll be hitting the sack. You're welcome, Norman. Hey, thank you for checking in. I think I think that well, that was great. Somebody you listen to a talk, uh, listen to how do you get your life, uh, explain the theory of, of AM radio and what have you. And I think that was great. Uh, the rest of these things is history. Now, uh, yeah, you're a general. That's great. Okay, thank you for checking in, Norm. I'll let you go so you can hit the sack. Have a good evening. Enjoy your weekend. Hopefully, we'll talk to you next Friday. If not, we'll talk to you another on a future Friday night. Okay. Uh, K9WOQ, are you still with us? How do you get uh, your friends to uh, uh, study for their ham radio license? K9WOQ, are you still with us? Okay, he must have been short time then. Well, of course, he wanted information on the ads and swap that traffic. All right. Well, that concludes my list. Do we have any more stations we want to check on the Friday night fun net? Please call now. Yeah. I'm sorry. Whoever's trying to get in, I'm getting nothing but my clicks, but nothing but noise. You want to increase your power or change the location, please? Give me a call on the Friday Night Fun Dead Hotline, area code 815-232-FN, FN 232-3636. I'll take your check and order the phone, but you're not hitting the repeater at all. That, now we're going to move on. Any more stations you want to check in? Please call now. This is K9GCR to find night funded on the uh, uh, K9 RFD repair in Rockford. That was John and Elgin K9 DDF checking on the Friday night funded online. That was a uh, okay. K9 uh, uh, Chicago Northwestern. Is that you? Uh, come on back. Come on back. Okay, Mark, I got you checked in. What do you say? Uh, the topic tonight is how do you get your friends to get, get their uh, that ham radio license? What do you say?
Six nine G seven to Friday night fun net on the uh, uh, K nine RV repair and rock for transferring for Friday night fun net temporary free board. Mark, I'll tell you what, I didn't hardly copy any of that at all. You might want to see about getting that situation resolved, at least where you can hit the repeater, because uh, the last few times you checked in, there was quite a bit of noise with, with your signal. You might want to see about doing something about that. Thank you for checking in, uh, uh, Mark. You have a good evening. Uh, are there any more stations to wish to check in the Friday night fund net? Please call now. G9EPZ, okay, Al, got, got you that, that check in. Uh, I'll get back to you in a minute. I think we got another station trying to check in. Another station, uh, there's another station trying to check in. Come on back. KL7JEB, I'm still here. I uh, checked in short time, but I've been monitoring. Okay, uh, okay, uh, Al, I'll get back to you in a minute there. KL7JEB, we're talking about how do you get your friends to get the study for their, uh, get their ham radio license there. Well, uh, what do you say? KL7JEB, well, I was, um, in Alaska, worked for the FAA electronic technician, and, uh, I had a radio, I had a friend that was, uh, um, KL7HHR, up in Alaska, and he said, Bill, he said, why don't you get your ham license? He says, you're an electronic technician, you should be able to do it. Well, I knew the electronics, but I had a little problem with the uh, Morse code, and um, I didn't really do it right away until I went to Panama, got down in Panama, and man, it was expensive trying to call back to the States, so I... Um, met some guys down there that went out to radio club and I got with them and they were going to give the test one morning. I sat down and took out the book and read the book and went down and I had been practicing Morse code and um, I guess I was, I had practiced it about 15 words a minute and so I went down and took the, I had to take the test after everybody else after they got through because I didn't really sign up for it. And um, I took the, <laughs> took the uh, almost fell the, the uh, novice. It was so slow, I couldn't hardly copy it. And But I didn't have any problems with the general class, which was 13 words a minute, and I got that okay. But uh, got my license, and uh, that was, what, 35, almost 40 years ago? Uh, back in 76. So, however long that is. <laughs> but uh, I do have a question right quick. Um, the color code for resistors, uh, if anybody remembers, it's BR, I, I think it's black, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, gray, and white. Uh, does that start as the black zero and then uh, one, two, three, four, five, six on up the line? Does anybody remember that? I've, you know, for 39, 40 years, I was a technician. I never had a problem with it. When I retired, I completely forgot it. Uh, KL7JB. See if anybody listening can help you out. Anybody help out the uh, Larry KL7JB about the, uh, the the color code? Anybody help him out, please? Go ahead, Larry. Go direct with the. Uh, uh, KL7JEB. Yeah, it starts out black, then brown, then red, uh, orange. Uh, it goes, bright boys rave over young girls, but anyway, uh, violet and uh, G and W, gold and white, I think it is. Anyway, uh, something like that. Bright boys, brown, uh, black, brown, red, orange, yellow, I think. Uh, green, blue, violet, and uh, I, I, lost, I lost track. You can find it on the internet uh, or whatever. Uh, K9KSSC. Uh, KL7JB. Yeah, I was. I thought it was BBR. Bad boys rape our young girls, but violet gives willingly. <laughs> um, 
black brown. That's that's where I was getting confused. Uh, that's uh, zero, that one through whatever. Um, thank you. You you just kind of jogged my memory there. No problem. Can I change that to? Okay, uh, I think uh, for purposes of this net, we just better reword our phonetics here. That does not uh, that does not sound uh, uh, very good here. So uh, come up with some other phonetics other than what that uh, uh, both you please. Okay, uh, <laughs> uh, that well, thank you, uh, Larry. Thank you very much for helping out the other Larry. Uh, Larry. Uh, uh, T9 KGT, thank you for helping out to Larry KL7JEP. That's uh, that's great. Let's uh, let's watch our phonetics, if you would please. All right. Uh, let's see. KD9 EPZ. Uh, Alan Rochelle. How do you get your best friend to get their ham radio license? Well, I have two friends that I have gotten them to get their licenses, and I went about it the same way. I went and sent them a each a bow fang, <laughs> so they had, had a, you know, and I had it programmed with all the um, all the transmits disabled, and then said, well, I had, you know, when, when you get your license, well, I'll turn the transmits on, and uh, you know, we used to get they used to call me on the phone. And I used to go and do just like we do on the trivia section. Through, throw um, throw the questions at them, and like I say, I have a friend in um, Boise, Idaho, that's now a general, and uh, my friend and my friend Chris, who's an over-the-road truck driver, he's a um, technician and has a radio in his truck, and I just sent a radio out to my son in um, Tucson because he had made some mentioned some interest and. In, uh, um, told him who he needed to get a hold of, hooked him up with the AM Radio Club out in Tucson, and hopefully he found, they found him in Elmer. That's great, uh, uh, Al, that, well, that, that's for sure, that, that's for sure. By the way, last night I listened to the, uh, the night watch that, it came in beautiful. I, I didn't check in, though, because I was, I was trying to watch the, 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 the 10 o'clock news, so... I hopefully the same there'll be the same results uh, uh, tonight after the ten o'clock there. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't getting them that well here, so it's that's the same conditions that are strange. I actually wasn't hearing them that well here. So and I I, I went to bed early, but um, that's part part that part of the fun. You know, even 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 the, the people that that, the, that that don't or can't, right, for whatever reason, run HF, either they don't have the license for it, or they don't have the antenna. But um, even here on on two meters, you know, gonna have a lot of fun when the when the conditions get right. I understand. Yeah. Uh uh, Ricky, WX9RLT is kind of getting it, it was, it was showing his interest in that net there, there too. So hopefully, uh, maybe he'll be he'll be listening uh, at 10 o'clock. Of course, uh, uh, at 10 o'clock, I'll still be uh, to run this net here too. So uh, okay, hey Al, thank you, uh, thank you for checking in, participating, and then I'm sure we'll hear from you in the, uh, during the trivia segment in a few minutes there. So any more stations want to check in the Friday night fun net? Are you coming over your Friday night fish fry, steak fry? Grocery shopping or the show, if uh, if, the, if you just uh, turn your radio, you just came home, turned your radio on, you've been copying to me over the last hour, this is your chance to check in the Friday Night Fun Net from everywhere in the region. We'll drop traffic, please call Case on GCR. Noise. 
Chase Sign G's yard to Friday night fund it on the uh, K9 RFG repair rock for transferring for Friday night fund at Chuckery for your report. Uh, Scott, Case I Y I am in roll. Is that you trying to check in? Okay, sounds good. Uh, uh, Scott, Case 9 yi is checking into the net from Monroe, Wisconsin, on the 195 simplex. He's swinging the beam, his beam over in my direction. Oh, uh, uh, Scott, we're talking about how do you get people, your best friend, your best buddy, to uh, uh, get their ham radio license. Uh, this was suggested by Lori K9 KGT. Uh, uh, what do you say? That's the way it goes sometimes. Sometimes some will be, some can do it, some can't. So that's, uh, that's for sure. Okay, did you go any place? Uh, did you go out to eat uh, tonight? That's good, uh, Scott. That, that's good. We're going to have a, a nice summer weather for us. We'll probably get some rain and what have going to be hot all weekend. That'd be great. Okay, Scott. Hey, I won't hold you. Thank you for checking the Friday Night Fun Net. Uh, enjoy your evening and uh, enjoy your weekend. Okay, sounds good, Scott. We'll catch you on the Green County net this coming Sunday night. Uh, that was Scott, Case I Y I and Monroe checking in on the 195 Simplex. I don't know if some of you did, uh, just, uh, were able to hear him. He, he swung his beam to, uh, to the south, uh, to the uh, uh, to the south here, so I was able to copy him beautifully from full scale. So, uh, uh, okay, uh, Scott is that control of the Green County Aries Racing Net, which meets every uh, uh, Sunday evening at 7.30 p.m. on the 145.10 repair in Monroe with the PL 123.0 minus all set. It's a combination of Aries uh, Racing and Rag Tune Net. Last week, it got done uh, right around 8 o'clock. That's <laughs> It's highly unusual. Sometimes they go for an hour, hour and a half, two hours, what have you. <laughs> Depends on how many people check it, but it's a good net. By all means, you check out that net. Okay, any more stations you want to check in the Friday Night Fun Net this time? Please call now. Number open nine, Okay, that last station. Uh, you might want to repeat your traffic slowly and phonetically if you would, please. Somebody to relay that traffic. Uh, there's a lot of noise. I could not copy it all. Other than, please uh, come on back and somebody please relay for me. November Alpha 9, Lima Echo, Cherry, North Ottawa. No traffic. November Alpha 9, Lima Echo, and North Ottawa, Illinois. Q South, Q South. Oh, the band must be open. Hey, uh, welcome to the Friday Night Fun Net. This is at Beach each and every Friday evening at 8 p.m. either on this repeater or the 146.61 repeater in Rockford. Uh, 61 is our main repeater, and this is the uh, this is our backup repeater. But 61 was not uh, uh, not responding uh, uh, well uh, with the too much uh, noise there. So, uh, okay, we're talking about how do you get your uh, friends to study for their ham radio license here. 
Do you have any comments on that? And I'm NA9LE in the group. Thanks for picking me up. Uh, hope I'm still making it in. Uh, yeah, a little bit of an opening. Uh, I can hear you guys from time to time, but uh, can rarely check in. Uh, ham rate, or, uh, hamstudy.org is the one I used. And the last year I uh, worked my way up to extra and coming up on one year license on the third of next month. So. That's what I got. Thanks for picking me up. NA9LE, back to net. Okay, sounds, sounds good. You're welcome. Thank you. We're checking the Friday night fun net. Uh, again, we meet every Friday evening at 8 p.m., either on this repeater or 14661. If you have a Facebook, if you have, I don't know if you have Facebook or not, but check out the Friday night fun net Facebook page. And go to Friday night fun net Central. Just follow the necessary instructions, and you'll, you'll, you'll get in. And by the way, this net is being recorded for future broadcasts on the Facebook page, so if you like, you can listen to the net whenever you like. And thank you for checking in from North Ottawa, Illinois. Farthest checking we've had so far. This is great. Okay, any more stations want to check in the Friday Night Fun Net? Please go now. Uh, this is Case 9 GCR Net Control, the Friday Night Fun Net. Well, I'm sure many of you know uh, the, the story as how I got into this hobby, but I'll tell it again. There was a, a there was a ham who used to live here in this building. He's a silent key now. Al Riss Lab, KB9 SCW. Of course, I got his QSL card perfectly posted right here at my desk. Uh, he was a, a long-time ham radio operator. One day we were talking, downstairs we were talking, I said, uh, what are you looking for? He said, he's looking for a radio club to come and buy UPS. He said, I asked him, what kind of radio club? An AM radio club. I told him how I was a CB operator many years ago, and we got talking back and forth. Finally, one day he said, Jim, I'm going to get you an uh, ARRL tech Q&A book, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you can tell you can get your license for AM radio. Well, I called by, I said, oh, okay. <laughs> sure enough. That's what he did. He had read all the questions to me. I studied. I studied. He read all the questions to me. Uh, I got all the, the 35 questions. I memorized all of them. Well, you know how it goes. Eventually, I took the test. I only missed uh, two questions, and uh, this is back in 2004. The rest, they say, is uh, this history. That's how I became a ham. So that, that's about it. So <laughs> but I, as, as I said, I was a CB operator way back in the mid uh, the late 70s when CB was, uh, the, was the, the craze back then, so that's how I did Okay. CB was great, but this this uh, is better. So, okay. Uh, any more stations you want to check the Friday Night Fun Desk? Please call now. Uh, by the way, Al Rislas was a veteran of the United States Navy. He, was, he served aboard the USS uh, Battleship USS Wisconsin in both the, the European and the Pacific theaters of World War II. He even got to see Bob Hope uh, perform on this uh, on this uh, show there uh, aboard ship there. Okay, any more stations want to check the Friday Night Fun Net? Please call now. Number 18 of the original 30 radio nut jokes. You know you are a radio nut when you store extra emergency AA batteries in the refrigerator. <laughs> if you have a homemade radio, this is again this is number 18 of the 30 original radio nut jokes. But the homemade radio nut jokes that we put together are a lot better. You have a homemade radio nut joke you want to pass along, you give me a call here on the radio on the Friday Night Fun Net Hotline. Area code 815-232-FNFN-232-3636. Here's number 20. You know you're a radio nut when you think a good time is breaking in a new part-time uh, Radio Shack uh, employee with your radio uh, wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm going to read the... I'm going to read the question and get the correct answer. How is a computer stop car used when conducting digital communication? The correct answer. Detail is the sound car provides audio to the radio's microphone input and converts to receive audio to digital form. We must not have very many people who use that to form communication. So we're gonna, we'll move on to another one here. Uh, what? And uh, skip that one. I'm not going to read that one. Oh, I read that question a few weeks ago. I'm not reading that one yet. What happens to power lost in a feed line? A. It increases the SWR. B. It comes back into your transmitter and could cause damage. C. It is converted into heat. Uh, D. It can cause distortion of your signal. What happens to power lost in a feed line? A. It increases the SWR. B. It comes back into your transmitter and could cause damage. C. It is converted into heat. D. It can cause distortion of your signal. Anybody correct to answer this question? WX9 RLT. Hey, Jimmy, uh, you got a little bit of noise there, so I hope I got this right. Um, if not, I'll just blame the noise. <laughs> uh, a is an alpha. <laughs> Sorry, Ricky. That's uh, that's not correct. That's not correct. Thank you for trying. Anybody else want to give it a shot? KD9EPZ. Go ahead, Al. It gets it gets dissipated by uh, as heat. You are correct, uh, Al, you are correct. What happens to power loss in the feed line? Correct answer. See, Charlie, it is converted into heat. Power loss in the feed line is converted into and dissipated heat. And radio license manual page 4-9. Uh, we'll see. We'll find another. We'll find another question here. Okay. Those of you who participate in fox hunts should know the answer to this one by heart. Which of these items would be useful for a hidden transmitter hunt? A. Calibrated SWR meter. B. A directional antenna. C. A calibrated noise bridge. D. All of these choices are correct. Which of these items would be used for a hidden transmitter hunt? A. Calibrated SWR meter. C. A directional antenna. C. A calibrated noise bridge. D. All of these choices are correct. Anybody have correct answer to this question? Oh, come on, people. I can't answer them all. Okay. Uh, was somebody trying to get in nothing but noise? Come back, uh, increase your power, change your location. Oh, no. 
well, KF9 SD, uh, apparently he's not participating in the, the, in the segment there, so uh, let me let me check him in. Uh, KF9 SD. Okay. Okay, uh, go, uh, uh, go ahead. Yeah, that's um, that's um, N9 um, GLE, and he turned his beam around. He can get in now. Was that? Now, was that? that I got an N8 and a 9 LE. Was that him? Yeah, I mean an A9 LE. I'm sorry. Okay, see if we can get the correct, uh, see if we can get the correct answer uh, uh, from him. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and give the answer. Uh, he's got his antenna turned around. He should get in the repeater now. Jerry, go ahead. Uh, the, uh, the correct answer was directional antenna. I'm on a GP9. Thanks, uh, NA9 LE. Okay, I copy direct. I copy direct. Thanks, Al. You are, you are correct. Uh, any nine LE, you are correct. You are correct. Which of these items would be useful for a hidden transmitter hunt? Correct answer is B Bravo, a directional antenna. All right. Thanks, Al. Uh, thank you anyway. Let's move on. Find another. We'll do a couple more uh, uh, tech questions, then we'll move on to another one. Okay. I can find it here. Okay. Okay. Why do exposure limits vary with frequency? A. Lower frequency RF fields have more energy than higher frequency fields. B. Lower frequency RF fields do not penetrate the human body. C. Higher frequency RF fields are transient. Tra in the nature, D, the human body absorbs more RF energy at some frequencies than at others. Why do exposure limits vary with frequency? A, lower frequency RF fields have more energy than higher frequency fields. B, lower frequency RF fields do not penetrate the human body. C, higher frequency RF fields are transient in nature. D, the human body absorbs more RF energy at some frequencies than at others. Anybody have correct answer to this question? KD9MAP is going with D Delta. Okay, KD9MAP, Gary, you are correct. You are correct. Why do exposure limits vary with frequency? Correct answer is D Delta. The human body absorbs more RF energy at some frequencies than at others. Eating as a result of exposure to RF fields is caused by the body absorbing RF energy. Absorption varies with frequency because the body absorbs more RF energy at some frequencies than others. And radio lights manual page one them page nine dash eleven. Okay. One more question. Let's see if I can find another one. And okay. All right. Okay. Now, what are the toughest uh, questions in the Tech General and Executive books? Your tower questions, of course. You didn't think I, you thought I was not going to ask these kind of questions. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> you new listeners who are listening, you get your ham radio license. Someday you're going to be involved in a in a tower climbing uh, expedition. You're going to be climbing the tower, you're going to be part of the tower's support crew. This question might put you over the top as far as getting your technician's life. So here we go. Under what circumstances is it safe to climb a tower without a helper or observer? A. When no electrical work is being performed. B. When no mechanical work is being performed. C. When the work being done is not more than 20 feet above the ground. D. Never. Under what circumstances is it safe to climb a tower without a helper or observer? A. When no electrical work is being performed. 
C, uh, B, when no uh, mechanical work is being uh, performed, C, when the work being done is not more than 20 feet above the ground, D, never. Anybody have the correct answer to this uh, uh, question? Is that you? If it's that so, we'll uh, uh, come on back. There's a lot of noise in the Okay, I want to read this question one more time. Under what circumstances is it safe to climb a tower without a helper or observer? A. When no electrical work is being performed. B. When no mechanical work is being performed. C. When the work being done is not more than 20 feet above the ground. D. Never. Anybody have correct to answer this say, uh, question? Let's see if the other station can come back here. Okay, I guess we lost that station. Anybody know the correct answer to this question? Come on back. I guess our tower climbers have gone. Okay, under what circumstances is it safe to climb a tower without any help or observer? Correct answer is D Delta, never. Never. Having a ground crew is important. Having a ground crew is important. Avoid climbing alone uh, where, whenever possible because it's never safe. If you do climb alone, don't do it, by the way, but if you do, then take along a handheld uh, radio. A ground crew uh, should have enough uh, members to do the job safely, including rendering aid if necessary. Ham radio license manual page 9-1. This concludes the technical portion of the Friday Night Fund at Trivia. We'll pick it up uh, again, uh, but before we do, are there any more stations you want to check in this time? Please call now. Uh, okay, come back with that, uh, come back with that call, please. November 9th, and come back. Copy. Let's see if we can some, get somebody to relay. Any sta uh, that, that station, come on back. Last station trying to check in, come on back. There's a lot of noise with your signal and I need someone to relay, please. Okay, we're going to we're going to move on with the rest of the trivia statement. Uh, well, that's the way it goes with conditions, folks. Okay, all right. First question in the general: How are radio communications usually affected by the charged particles that reach Earth from solar coronal holes? A. HF communications are improved. B. HF communications are disturbed. C. VHF UHF ducting is improved. D. VHF UHF ducting is disturbed. How are radio communications usually affected by the charged particles that reach Earth from solar coronal holes? A. HF communications are improved. B. HF communications are disturbed. D. VHF UHF ducting is improved. D. VHF UHF ducting is disturbed. Anybody have correct answer to this question? KD9 MAP is guessing B Bravo. 
You are correct, Gary. You are correct. All our radio communications usually affected by the charged particles that reach Earth from solar coronal holes. Correct answer is B. Bravo. HF communications are disturbed. The corona is the sun's outer layer. Temperatures in the corona are typically about 2 million degrees Celsius, but can be more than 4 million degrees Celsius above an active sunspot region. A coronal hole is an area of somewhat lower temperature. Matter ejected through such a hole is in the form of plasma, a highly ionized gas made up of electrons, protons, and neutral particles. If the jet of material is directed toward the Earth, it can result in a geomagnetic storm on Earth, disrupting HF communication. General class eyes and manual page 8-12. Let's, uh, let's continue on. Uh, oh, I read that question last week. I'm not going to read it again. Let's see here. Oh, good grief. I'm not reading. Sorry about this, folks. I'm trying to... Some of these questions don't make sense as far as I'm concerned. I'll just... All right. Uh, what is the name of the process that changes the instantaneous frequency of an RF wave to convey information? A. Frequency convolution. B. Frequency transformation. C. Uh, frequency conversion. D. Frequency modulation. What is the name of the process that changes the instantaneous frequency of an RF wave to convey information. A. Frequency convolution. B. Frequency transformation. C. Frequency conversion. D. Frequency modulation. Anybody correct to answer this question? Uh, try that. You might want to increase your power or change location or I'm going to have to have someone relay. Come on back. Come on back. Anybody get a uh, copy on that station? Station, come on back one more time. I cannot copy you at all. Well, I'm going to read this question one more time. Yeah, I'm sorry. Station out there, I'm sorry. I'm not able to copy you at all. Uh, better luck next time. Hopefully you'll be able to improve your situation, change your power, change your direction, or, or, or do something there. Uh, what is the name of the process that changes the instantaneous frequency of an RF wave to convey information? A. Frequency convolution. B. Frequency transformation. C. Frequency conversion. D. Frequency modulation. Anybody have to answer this question? 89 MAP is going with D Delta. You are correct, Terry. Uh, let's see if that, uh, there was another station trying to get in there. Let's, let's, give, uh, let's give that one more time. Other station come back. You say the same thing. Oh, I'm, I'm having a time. I can't copy the other station at all, but Gary, you are correct. What is the name of the process that changes the uh, instantaneous frequency of an RF wave to convey information? Correct answer is D-delta. Frequency modulation. 
Good old FM. <laughs> okay. Okay, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna do some extra questions here. If I can All right. If I can find it either. All right. Okay. Which amateur stations are eligible to operate as Earth stations? A. Any amateur station whose uh, licensee has filed a pre space notification with the FCC's International Bureau? B. Only those of general, advanced, or amateur extra class operators? C. Only those of amateur extra class operators? D. Any amateur station subject to the privileges of the class of operator license held by the control operator? Which amateur stations are eligible to operate as Earth stations? A. Any of the amateur stations whose uh, licensee has filed a free space notification with the FCC's International Bureau. B. Only those of general, advanced, or, or amateur extra class operators. C. Only those of amateur extra class operators. Uh, D. Any amateur station subject to the privileges of the class of operator license held by the control operator. Anybody have a correct answer to this question? KD9MAP, I keep liking D Delta. Well, I'm glad you do, Carrie, because you're correct. <laughs> Which amateur stations are eligible to operate as Earth stations? Correct answer. D, Delta, any amateur station subject to the privileges of the class of operator license held by the control operator. Your license class is not an impediment to operate an Earth station. Any licensee can do it, limited to the privileges of the class of operator license held by the control operator. 97.209, extra class license manual patient. Z-13, which I do not have. All right. Some of these... Uh, some, of these some of these questions, I think, belong to the... Uh, in the tech uh, Q&A, so I'm not even going to bother reading them. All right. One moment, please. Uh, I don't know. I... Now that very many of you operate uh, with uh, satellites, and some of these questions there, uh, I'm not even going to bother with. Uh, but try to try to skip these ones. Uh. Oh boy! Good grief! Okay. All right. From which of the following bands is amateur radio contesting generally excluded? A. 30 meters B. 6 meters C. 2 meters D. 33 centimeters From which of the following bands is amateur radio contesting generally excluded? A. 30 meters B. 6 meters C. 2 meters D. 33 centimeters Anybody have correct answer this question? KD9QDP. Go ahead, uh, uh, Rick. Yeah, that would be a 30 meters. You are correct, Terry. You are correct. From which of the following bands is after radio contesting generally excluded? Correct answer is 30 meters. By general, that, that's A, 30 meters. By general agreement, 60, 30, 17, and 12 meters are excluded from uh, contest activities. Those are the work bands, as Eugene Delta W9 GD used to say. This uh, gives stations not interested, not interested in the contest an additional option for avoiding contest activity. Extra class lies in band page 2 uh, uh, 6. Uh, uh, Rick, I know you checked in short time or earlier during the net. But I was asking the question, this was uh, Larry, K9KZT suggested it, but uh, how do you get your uh, your friends there to uh, study for your license? 
felt uh, to get my friends to study for my license, uh, they wouldn't do it. I had to do it myself. <laughs> okay, okay, Rick, that, that, sound, that, that sounds good, sounds good. We had a station check-in from all the way from uh, North Ottawa. I don't know if you heard that or not. In November Alpha 9, uh, Lima Echo from North Ottawa, Illinois. Oh, that, that's a good distance. Yeah, I said that the band, uh, the band must be opened uh, a little bit there, so, uh, yeah. You know what, I'm trying to find some, uh, I haven't read any questions about the uh, slow scan TV. I'm trying to find, uh, I'm trying to find where they were, so, uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Sooner or later, I'll, I'll find it here. I just don't, I just don't know what the, they got to be in the first few chapters of this uh, book here. Uh, oh, I read, I read that question, and I read that question too. Uh, okay. To what type of regulations does PRB-1 apply? A. Homeowners Associations. B, FAA tower height limits. C, state and local zoning. D, use of wireless devices in vehicles. To what type of regulations does PRB-1 apply? A, homeowners associations. B, FAA tower height limits. C, state and local zoning. D, use of wireless devices in vehicles. Anybody correct answer this question? QDP. I'm going to take a shot in the dark on that one. I think that's B. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. You took a, took a shot in the dark. Apparently, uh, I'm sorry to say you missed. That's that. That's not the correct answer. Thank you anyway, uh, Rick. Anybody else want to give it a shot? Well, I know what the PRB2 and PRB3 regulations say, but I haven't heard of the PRB1. I'm going to guess D Delta again, KD9 MAP. Okay, well, sorry, Terry, that you guess that, that that's that's not the correct answer either. It's got to be C then, uh, KD9 QDP. You are correct, Terry. You are correct. That is the right. That is the correct answer. To what type of regulations does PRB1 apply? Correct answer: C, Charlie. State and local zoning. PRB-1 only applies to local government regulations and does not affect deed restrictions and covenants or homeowners associations or HOA rules. It requires that any local regulations make reasonable accommodations for amateur radio operations. 97.15, extra class lines, manual page 3-8. So, uh, okay. Fine. We'll find, we'll find something here. I'm looking for uh, uh, slow scan TV questions. I can't seem to find them uh, uh, anywhere. So okay, uh, one moment, please. I'll have to go back to the book and find the index there. <laughs> They have one on slow scan CW. Oh boy, that I couldn't tell you, uh, uh, Terry. And you know what? I guess this book does not have an index. Oh boy. <laughs> I think Terry just created a new mode of operation. Okay. All right. This is going to, uh, let's see. 
If a station in a message forwarding system inadvertently forwards a message that is in violation of FCC rules, who is primarily accountable for the rules violation? A. The control operator of the packet bulletin board station. B. The control operator of the originating station. C. The control operators of all the stations in the system. D. The control operators of all the stations in the system not authenticating the source from which they accept communication. If a station in a message forwarding system inadvertently forwards a message that is in violation of FCC rules, who is primarily accountable for the rules violation? A. The control operator of the uh, packet bulletin board station. Uh, B. The control operator of uh, the originating station. C. The control operators of all the stations in the system. D. The control operators of all the stations in the system not authenticating the source from which they accept communication. Does anybody have correct answer to this question? KD9 SHG, B Bravo. KD9 SHG, uh, you are correct, you are correct. If a station in a message forwarding system inadvertently forwards a message that is in violation of FCC rules, who is primarily the uh, accountable for that, the rules violation? Uh, the correct answer is B Bravo, you are correct. The control operator of the original station. And the discussion is rather lengthy, so I'm not even going to bother reading it. K9SHT, uh, the topic tonight, we're talking about uh, how do you get your friends to uh, go for their ham radio license. Uh, what do you say? I don't have a good uh, answer for that one. Uh, I'm the only one in my group of friends that has my license. Oh, okay. Well, maybe sometime a few years down the road, maybe you'll eventually... Uh, 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 talk to, to somebody, uh, your old friends or your new friends you make there, maybe you can do it that way, so... Okay, what else is going on with you? Oh, not much back in school. I've been uh, traveling all over the Midwest the past couple weeks, so that's why I haven't been on the airs. Well, stuff happens, that's, uh, that's the way it goes. This, this is, after all, a hobby. So that's, uh, that's the way it goes. Okay, hey. Drive safely. Thank you for checking into the Friday Night Fun Net. Uh, enjoy your evening and uh, enjoy your weekend. LD, you guys do the same. Okay. Let's see. Any more stations you want to check in the Friday Night Fun Net this time? Please go on out. I'll tell you what, I think we're gonna, I think I'm gonna give up on that. We're the, I think we've got enough trivia questions for tonight anyway. Thanks to everybody for participating. We'll do this again next uh, Friday night. Any more stations want to check the Friday night fund at this time? Please go on out. KD9SAZ, Daniel Rockford, short time checking in, no traffic. G9SAZ, oh, uh, uh, Daniel. The question uh, for this week, for tonight, I'm asking everybody, uh, what do you, how do you get, uh, what do you do to get your friends to uh, go for their ham radio license? Uh, get them in front of the rig, get them over here. Um, it's great when conditions are running, even the 2 meter 440 side as well. Um, just get them interested, talk about everything they can do. Um, the way the world is going, uh, it's starting to concern a lot more people than ever, that's for certain. And uh, I think uh, we're starting to see an incline in radio interest by far, so it's just... Uh, getting people in front of the the uh, 
uh, equipment and um, having fun and uh, getting a book in their hand and helping them through it and telling them you'll take them right over to the test so they can get it done. KD9SAZ back to net control. Uh, this is case on GCR to Friday Night Fun Dead and the uh, K9 RFD repeater Rockford transfer for Friday Night Fun Dead Central and Freeport. Dan, I'll tell you what, I don't, I don't think it's a guy. I, I think it's the other way around. I think, uh, I think interest in ham radio is going up, especially since the, since the virus has uh, started. You can see, you see more people getting involved in the radio and stuff like that, especially local areas, races, uh, groups, and, uh, and, and, and what have you. But I, I think, I think in, in the past few years, I think the, the number of ham radio operators, especially in the U.S., has uh, gone up considerably. That's what I understand. Yep, I think so as well. Unless I said something wrong there, Jimmy, um, just uh, running across the room, and uh, uh, unless I didn't say something correct, I'm absolutely agree with you. Um, the you know the the pandemic and the way the world uh i think a lot more people are taking interest in emergency situations i think it's I, yeah i didn't uh, if i said decline i meant to say incline um absolutely uh i think a lot of people are uh, i i know when uh you, you, you put an antenna up now, and you have the neighbor saying, what's that? What's that for? What can you do? <laughs> and, and they all seem pretty interested in, in uh, you know, listening to uh, 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 the world. And uh, I've had a few neighbors, you know, physically come over, turn the thing on, and uh, uh, very intrigued there. Um, K9SAZ, back to net control. QDP comments. Yeah, I know you checked in short time. Well, you know, you might see, I think you're going to see a lot of interest in short wave listening. That was the way it was back in the first, uh, the Persian Gulf War, back in the, the, the Operation uh, Desert Storm back in 1991. People are going out and buying short wave radios. They're right, right and left. I think you're going to see the, the same thing here with the situation going on. I think you, there's going to be a lot more short wave listening. And uh, you never know. You don't know what's going to happen. Uh, we might end up. We might uh, go. Might end up going back there to Afghanistan and with uh, full force, or who knows? We might end up fighting the war with Iran, North Korea, or China. Who knows? Hope not. But that's a situation the way it is in the world. You just uh, don't know. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just, uh, it, it's sad. And I, I really, really hope things can get back to normal. But boy, that's, that's asking, uh, uh, yeah, we know, we know what that's asking for. Anyway, uh, uh, Jimmy, go ahead. I think Rick, uh, I think that was Rick that was trying to get in there. So I'll let you let him go. And, uh, um, Hello to everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. And uh, Jimmy, great job as always. Uh, K9SAZ back to net control. Hello, three, Daniel. Thank you for checking in for this Friday night fun. Day. We'll talk to you down the hall. WX9 RLT Ricky. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Oh, uh, sorry about that. Uh, K9 QDP Rick. Go ahead. I just want to add, uh, since uh, I got back into it there, uh, it'll be one year ago tomorrow, uh, amateur radio has picked up. Uh, looking at the uh, stats here, since I got into it, there's 13,012 new amateurs uh, that are licensed in the past year. That is terrific, Rick. That is great news. That is great news. Hopefully, when we have our next VE testing session in uh, October, we'll pick up uh, we'll pick up some new hands. Uh, this uh, sad to say, this past month, we have one person that came to took the test. He did not pass. Let's hope he comes back in October and passes. But that's great. So okay. At this time, any more stations want to check in the finite fund net? Please call now. 
KC9 GCR N9NQD. Good evening. What's happening with you? Well, good evening. Well, it's been a sticky one. Hopefully there's some humidity will begin to leave us and I can breathe a little easier. So, hey, what's my number for tonight? Uh, step away the radio, Matt. You're checking number 27. Well, that's a good amount for tonight. I heard you state the question uh, about getting people into the radio business or a program. Well, I always put it to my friends, what would you do for a Klondike bar? Or how about a Clark bar? Reese's peanut butter cups or she bar? Or how about a Snickers ice cream bar? Well, if that doesn't work, well, then I don't know. But it's best to be prepared, like the old Boy Scout motto used to go. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, they're starting to adver I see they're advertising the Klondike bars on TV again, like they used to do years ago. Say, hey, uh, Art, worked the questions and I worked at talking. How do you uh, to get people, get your best friends or your best buddies to, to get their ham radio uh, license there? Like I said, what would you do for a Klondike bar? Bribe them. <laughs> Simple bribery works pretty good, yeah. I've, I found it to be most effective. But now it's like anything else. They've either got a prurient interest, you know, the radios, the antennas, uh, talking to other people uh, in other states, other countries, it's most interesting. And I've talked to a few countries. Yeah, and been very interesting. And that's about all you can do. And then hopefully you get a good Elmer to, to lead you into this as well. Well, I'll tell you what I sure did. Al Rislap, uh KB9SCW, he's a uh, silent key uh, now. He was a World War II veteran, served in, uh, in uh, the USS uh, Wisconsin, a uh, battleship, in both uh, theaters of operation. He really helped me, he did a, good, a great job, too. Yep, I hear you. So, well, with that, thank you very much. Good to hear you tonight. And uh, hope maybe you get a few more check-ins. I'll be listening. And I'm in duty. Okay, we'll go, go between uh, 10 and 10.30, so, uh, that, okay, thank you for checking in, uh, Art. Uh, this is Case 9 GCR to Friday Night Funded on the K9 RFD Repair in Rockford, transmitting for Friday Night Funded Central here in Freeport. It is now 10 p.m. curfew time. Parents, do you know where your children are at? Yeah, change to their bunk beds. Don't really care. They're too busy watching new, uh, the TV. Sounds good. Okay, thank you for checking. Any more stations you want to check it? Please call now. Don't really care nowadays, Jimmy. What's the matter with you? <laughs> Boy, ain't that the truth. Well, I do it as a public service on the Friday night fun <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> Jimmy, uh, I, I think you, when you asked me about that question uh, about uh, encouraging people to get, get their ham ticket and all that, I think you, uh, 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 you're, you're asking me uh, how other people got me into it. And, uh, you know, at that point I said, well, uh, they didn't. I had to do it myself. But anyway, I think I know what you're saying here at this point. And the way I would encourage people to get into amateur radio is... Look at the communications nowadays. I'm talking the internet, I'm talking cell phones, I'm even talking the old landline. All, if all of that were to go down, what would be your source of communication then? This is Case 
Brian G. Sarah, the Friday Night Fun Network, K9 RFD, Repeater, and Rockford, transcript for Friday Night Fun Network, Trevor and Freeport. You are absolutely right, uh, uh, Rick. Uh, people think that nothing will happen with the Internet. I'll tell you what, the hell it won't happen. AJ, if we get a major storm or disaster, first thing to go will be your Internet and your cell phones. And uh, you might still have some, uh, you might still have some landline uh, phone service. But uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, you see, when all else, when all else fails, ham radio is uh, available. So that's a, uh, uh, any people listening on scanners, you uh, might want to consider getting uh, your, getting your uh, a ticket. Uh, if you know a ham radio operator, contact uh, someone who'll get you an ARRL tech, a Q&A book, or a, or a, uh, or a, a tech, operations technician's manual you can study that way too so but uh, you never you never know what could happen uh, if your internet your cell phones go you don't have your your communications you'll be up a creek without a paddle that's all there is to it unless you get a, a, a ham radio license it's, uh, uh, Rick for that advice uh, that's okay any more stations want to check the Friday Night Fun Day, please call now. KC9GCR, K9FLO. K9FLO, L-O-D. I just was just now thinking about you. I thought, oh boy, he's trying to check in here. We're talking about blabbing away. <laughs> What's going on with you, Dean? Hi, Jimmy. Well, I was watching a movie and I forgot all about the data. Good evening to you, uh, Rick. Sounding good tonight. And, uh, yeah, I'm running way behind. No, actually, I'm a little later than normal. But, uh, anyway, uh, Jim, how's the net going? Did you have, a, uh, hopefully a good uh, check-in tonight? Uh, I think it's kind of a quiet night out there. Uh, KC9GCR, k 9 fl Yes, that's going great there, uh, Dean. Uh, you're, you're, I got 28 tenants. You're checking number 28. I'm asking a question. This was suggested to me by Larry, T9KZT. How do you get your friends to get, get their ham radio license? That, that's what the discussion is about tonight. <laughs> Interesting question. Um, all right. Um, it, uh, all my friends are old. And we're they're beyond that, or they already have their license. Uh, but uh, the best way is to be a mentor. Uh, I had a neighbor that lived next door to us a number of years ago, and a young man, and he uh, basically that that's how he get his license. Uh, he would uh, I'd say, "Come on over here, watch me talk on the radio." This is probably about 15, 20 years ago, and he'd come over and uh, and sit and listen and. He got his license, and his son got the license, too, so um, it worked out pretty good. It, I always find that's a good way. In fact, that's how I got my license uh, back in, uh, a number of years ago. From uh, uh, got, My mentor was a guy named Doug Carlson. He was a canine LUX. He was right uh, down in Rockford, and I used to walk by his house going to junior high school, I was amazed by those big antennas up on the roof, and walking by there, going home from school, I it was out there, kind of got talking to him, and I guess uh, anyway, he became a mentor. That's, that's my story, and I'll stick to it. KC9 GCR, KC9 FLO. Okay, sounds good. Now, Dean, is this a now uh, when you first got into this hobby? Is it is this your uh, written? K9 FLO, was that, was that your original call or did you have an earlier call? No, I had an earlier call. Uh, uh, boy, i got to think about that for a bit. I had a, a WD9 FLO, and before that, um, uh, boy, I guess it, um, W, uh, I guess, I'm sorry, uh, I had a W, the original was a WN9 uh, SPP, SPC, SPB, I don't remember exactly what it was, something like that there, uh, uh, Jim, go ahead. 
All right, I was just curious. It's no big deal. It's not important. I was, I was just asking. Dean, hey, uh, yeah, I did check into the, um, you might have heard me checking the Rock County that this past uh, Tuesday. I did uh, I did mention it, so uh, I understand you're going to be getting your uh, system fusion that uh, back, uh, going again, uh, right? Uh, hopefully. Uh, I think the tentative plans uh, it will start that up probably the first week of September on that. Uh, we'll certainly bring it up on the uh, Tuesday night net and let let everybody know. And uh, at that time, you can pass it on to everybody on here. But uh, that's uh, I can't believe it's already that time. I uh, you know boy, I tell you what, this summer's gone uh, very quick, way too quick. And uh, you know, I just uh, I just can't even imagine that this we're coming up on the last part of uh, August. So the fairs are almost over, and uh, always look forward to that in, in August. But you know, right after that, it's it's coming to an end, and that means uh, the apple orchards are all going to be opening up to go get your apples and cider and all that stuff, but. Yeah, I don't know. I, it, it, you know, the time just seems, at uh, this point, seems to just move in a whole lot quicker. Besides losing sunlight at a much uh, more rapid pace there, I think we lose an hour a month now. So that's way too quick. KC9GCR, K9FO. Yeah, I hear you. I, what did I see? Uh, Channel 13 was at one of the apple orchards. I don't know what the name of that place was. It's in northwestern part of Rockford there, but they showed that uh, actually they're going to be opening up tomorrow. But you, I'll tell you what. I wish we wouldn't. I wish we would never have fall. I wish we would have summer uh, year round. We'll just uh, we'll just put it that way. I'm just not in the cool, cool weather and the fall colors. Oh God, I just get depressed to see those leaves that uh, turn. I, I like to see. Green leaves all the time. <laughs> yeah, but you know, to go with the green leaves, uh, that means you'd have to be in that area that has palm trees too. And uh, yeah, the year round, I don't know. I like having the seasons still, always have something to look forward to instead of just a little bit warmer, a little bit cooler year round. It's kind of nice to have the change, but. You know, we've all had this is the way we uh, grew up uh, in this uh, area, and that's the way it is. And I don't know if I would like it being in my family. It all lives down in a nice part of the country where it's warm all the time. And so I guess that's the flip side of the coin is we guys go down here and visit family, and uh, then it's not, no longer an issue. And But uh, I don't know. I, I don't like the real hard winter, but moderated is always nice we'll see what this year brings hope it's a little bit better last year was a little um tough uh with the winter uh there i think it was february january february and we had all the uh ice build up on the roofs and all that so that was uh for a lot of people that was rather expensive winter but uh you know the climate's moderating and it's hard to say what we're going to get this year uh jim uh, go ahead I hear you, Dean. Yeah, those four of those wildfires out west and those storms and hurricanes in the east and back east or what have you, sir. Yeah, sure going to be a mess. Okay, Dean, hey, thank you for checking the fine night fun. Night. Enjoy your evening. Enjoy your weekend. We'll, we'll look forward to hearing you on, on the Tuesday night, Rock County Net. Otherwise, we'll talk to you next Friday night. All right, Jim. Hey, take care. Seven threes. Have a great uh evening what's left of it and uh yeah fall's going to be here soon enough so uh and, yeah, we're, but we're going to have uh, several 90 degree days coming up this week uh, it's going to be a while before we see the change so you know the good thing about this year is i think we've had a lot less bugs than we have in past years many years and that was one thing we've noticed around here that nowhere near the number of uh of uh, the Japanese uh, beetle thing and the, uh, 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 everything seems to be reduced there. and I think that's due to our drought 
and so I'm not going to complain because uh, it's kind of nice. And even the mosquitoes here, we haven't had the mosquitoes this year at all, like we have in past summers. Anyway, Jim, take care of seven three. Talk at you later. Uh, KC9 GCR, K9 FO. Those of you that we talked to are case on GCR, and this is case on GCR to Friday night funded on the uh, K9 RFD repair and ride for transmitting for Friday night funded at Chester and Freeport. We have any more stations you want to check in this time? Please call now. Like I said a, a few times, uh, I know it's really the past few years, a couple years, we haven't had no mosquitoes. I sat outside last night for an hour and a half after the health after I ran the Saturn it. Uh, no problem uh, whatsoever with bugs. I think that's great. Uh, so, uh, okay, at this time, I'm going to give you a rundown of all the other nets we have in the area. The uh, Night Watch net is currently underway right now on the uh, on, on the 443.750 repeater in Chicago. CFMC repeater, that has a PL 114.8 plus offset. Uh, if you cannot get into that repeater, uh, you can check in via the uh, Netco link. That net runs from, uh, uh, that net uh, runs seven nights a week. Starts at 10 p.m. and it runs till at least 11 o'clock or longer than that. Depends on how many check-ins we get. The, uh, again, it's on the 443.750 repeater. CFMC, uh, 440 repair in Chicago, PL 114.8 plus offset. The Lunch Munch Net meets each and every Friday evening at, uh, the Lunch Munch Net meets um, every day Monday through Friday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. A swap net is held at 12.30 p.m. It's on the 145.430 repeater in the uh, uh, Downers Grove, Illinois. W9DUP, DuPage County repeater, PL 107.2 minus offset. There is a Saturday night fun net with beach every Saturday evening at 9 p.m. on the 146.910 repair in Milwaukee with PL 127.3 minus offset. Uh, uh, it's a lot more structured than this net. You got to check in a certain way, A through G, H through N, so far on and so forth. Some of their uh, topics that you talk about, I wouldn't even dream of bringing them on this net. Too controversial. So uh, that's the way it goes. Saturday night fun net, 9 p.m. every Saturday evenings, 146910 repeater in Milwaukee, PL 127.3 minus offset. They have a very few that they have, they don't have as many check ins as this, this net does, that's for sure. So that's enough of that. Okay. The uh, uh, Green County Aries Races that meets each and every Sunday evening at 7.30 p.m. on the 145-110 repeater in Monroe, PL of 123.0 minus offset. Scott, case 9 yi We checked into this net earlier via the Simplex's net control. It's a combination of Aries races and rag shoe net. Last week, they, only, they, last, they went for about a half hour. That's highly unusual for them. They usually run for about an hour, hour and a half, two hours. <laughs> okay, but it's a good net. Do check into that net. Big Thunder Amp Trade Cup holds a Sunday evening net at 8 p.m. on the 147.375 repeater in Belvedere with a PL of uh, 100.0 uh, plus offset. The uh, Whiteside County Aries Group holds its uh, uh, net at uh, 8, also at 8 p.m. on the 146.850 repeater in Sterling with a PL of 114.8 minus offset. You should not have any problem getting into that repeater. That's about 300, the antenna is about 300 feet high on the Illinois State Police Radio, District 1 Radio Tower. So, uh, Monday evenings, this Smith. Monday evenings at 7 p.m., either here on this repeater or on, hopefully on 14661. We have the uh, Rockford, uh, uh, the Rara, uh, info net. Uh, I'll be net control this coming, uh, uh, Monday. Uh, Larry, Larry K9, KCT, and I share the uh, uh, net control duties. Immediately following that net will be cold practice, hosted by Larry K9, KZT. Uh, there were 12 check-ins on that net. Also, to, uh, Monday evenings at 8 uh, p.m. on the 14697 uh, repeater in Dixon, PL 82.5, uh, 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 minus all set, the Lee County Aries Races Group holds its Monday evening net. 
Immediately following that dead at 8.30 p.m. on the 146.730 repeater in the cow. PL 100.0 minus offset. The Kitchwaukee after 8 o'clock holds its uh, uh, Monday evening net. Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. here on this repeater, we have the first of two uh, Elvin Tech nets. Uh, uh, Larry H9GO holds that net. You, you want to find out how you're doing health-wise? You have any, te uh, have any technical questions? And may we find that, that uh, Larry K9KZT has cold practice. Okay, uh, Rick, K9QDP, are you still on the air? Tell us about the uh, long wires net. Okay, uh, yeah, we meet every Tuesday night, 8 p.m., on the uh, frequency of uh, 28.390. And this past Tuesday we had, uh, I believe it was seven or, or eight on the roster. I'd have to go back and look. But, uh, yeah, it was eight of them. Eight people uh, were on the roster there this past Tuesday. So, uh, yeah, we hold it every Tuesday night, uh, 8 p.m. there on 28.390 upper side band. Well, like I said, don't don't feel bad, uh, uh, Rick. I'll bet you next Tuesday you get about, maybe you'll get 100 check-ins. <laughs> this happened in the early days of the Friday Night Fun Net. We always had like 10, 12, 13, 14 to check-ins or what, what have you there and when we were on the 300 repeater. That was, uh, that was in the early days of the net, that we didn't really take off. This net, I don't think it finally took off until we moved to the uh, uh, 255 repair back in 2010. After that, especially in 2011, the net really took off. Uh, there, in the early part of the, the 2011. So that was a, uh, that was when the Friday Night Fun that was in its heyday. We had as many as 50 or sometimes we even had even 60 check-ins. Uh, on the, during the net, but uh, I think maybe when we get more ham radio operators, I think those days will be coming back. Yeah, yeah, more than likely, especially when the cold weather sets in. You know, summertime, yeah, you can expect things to look, be a little bit slow. Everybody's out enjoying themselves, and uh, so yeah, during the winter months, it'll definitely pick up. Cold months. I hear. Okay, thanks for letting us tell us about the, the long wires net there, and then uh, that that that's great. It's, well, uh, Dan K K nine S A Z is definitely helping you out with that too. So okay, uh, continuing with all the other nets, the Ogle County after eight, and then including Every Sky one holds its uh, uh, Tuesday evening net at nine p.m. on the one four seven point one six five repeater in Oregon with the PL one. Uh, 46.2 uh, plus offset. Wednesday evenings at uh, 7 p.m. here in Freeport on the 147.390 repeater. PL 114.8 plus offset. We have our weekly Seams to County Aries net. I'm usually filling in as, uh, as net control. And at uh, 7.30 p.m. on the 147.120 repeater deployed with the PL 123.0 plus offset. Greater Boyd at Trade O'Cup holds its. Uh, uh, Wednesday evening net. And uh, Wednesday evening at immediately following that net at 8 p.m. on the 147.390 repeater in Freeport. We have our Wednesday evening swap net. It runs from uh, 8 p.m. till 9 p.m. until all traffic is uh, handled. Then, of course, we have the second uh, on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. here on this repeater. We have the second of the health and tech nets. I'm net control of that one. And, uh, also, the uh, Rock County Repair Association will have, get its uh, system fusion that back uh, going again on 146.715 uh, repeater in uh, in Clinton, Wisconsin. Okay. Let me, okay. Uh, those of you on HF, the senile net meets uh, on the 14.287 uh, megahertz 20 meters upper sideband at 14... 
1,400, 1,500 hours, Zulu, and uh, Chunk, WD-9BB is net control. He has uh, takes check-ins on way locally, but uh, throughout uh, the U.S. Okay, now you're all caught up on your local net. Support your local nets, your local net control operators. Support your local repeaters. If you're a member of any ham radio club, by all means, do support your local clubs. Okay. Any more stations want to check in the Friday night fun net this time? Please call now. November 9, Golf Bravo Papa. November 9, Golf uh, Bravo Papa. Good evening, your. Checking number 29, the Friday Night Fun Net. Uh, what's going on with you? Well, I tried to check in earlier, but I've had some antenna problems, so glad I finally got through. Well, I'm glad you did. Hey, we're, the, the question this week, we're talking about uh, how do you get your friends to uh, get their ham radio license. Uh, well, what do you say about that? Well, I've shown all my friends all my uh, equipment here, and I got a couple of them interested, but none of them have got their licenses yet. Well, I don't know what happened there, how I got over the digital side, but oh, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, well. It I'm sure somebody will come along and they, they see your equipment and they want to know how you get into it or what have you. You just have to tell them. Yeah, one of these days they'll probably want to talk to me on here, so maybe they'll do it. Okay, sounds good. Hey, thank you for checking the Friday Night Fun Net. Enjoy your evening. Enjoy your weekend. Thanks, and 73. Any more stations you want to check the Friday Night Fun Net? Please go now. Okay, I want to tell you about the uh, Friday Night Fun Net Central uh, uh, Facebook page. Contact uh, uh, Ricky WX9RLT and he'll get you signed up. He's in charge of that. Uh, uh, you want to uh, go ahead and look up uh, the uh, it's Friday Night Fun Net Central. Follow the necessary instructions. You'll get in. By the way, uh, Mike K9MED is recording this net for future uh, rebroadcasts on the Friday Night Fun Net Facebook page. Uh, you can listen to the net anytime you want. You can listen to past uh, editions of the Friday Night Fun Net. Hopefully, what, eventually what we'll do, it'll be all Friday Night Fun Net all the time. You can listen to it. Uh, well, in fact, uh, you can listen to the Friday Night Fun Net every night of the week. It doesn't have to be on Friday night. Every night is Friday night. If you listen to Friday Night Fun Net, on the, especially on, on the Facebook page. So, uh... Hopefully we will be here on Friday Night Fun Net, uh, 24-7, 365, uh, seven days a week, Sundays and holidays. So that, that'd be great. All Fun Net, all Friday Night Fun Net all the time. I want to thank uh, Terry King on MED who, uh, who uh, is uh, doing this. Uh, you see pertinent information about the Friday Night Fun Net. You see updated pictures of my app shack. You either see uh, uh, whether... Uh, you either You'll even see weather information. I can't even talk. <laughs> if you want to sign up for the Friday Night Fun Net Central Facebook page, contact Ricky WX9 RLT and he'll get you signed up. Next, I want to tell you about the Friday Night Fun Net Central Hotline. Area code 815-232-FNFN-232-3636, the local Freeport number. We had two hotline check-ins tonight. Uh, 
Case 9 EDF John Elton and KF9 SD Pan Warren, Illinois. Uh, you heard it ring uh, while I was transmitting? That's a real tall board ring, not that bony, bony cell phone ring. You've seen pictures of it on our Facebook page. It's a traditional red desktop touch tone uh, telephone. If you're on the six, you can hear the repair, but you can't get into it due to conditions or you're, you're too far away from it. Just give me a call to Friday Night Fund that hotline. I'll take your checking over the uh, phone, but try to check it on the radio first. Okay, looking for number 30 here. Any more stations you want to check in the Friday Night Fund that? Please call now. Okay, anybody have any additional questions, comments, or input, or any traffic you'd like to bring before the net this time? Okay, at this time, I'm going to do my honorary check-ins. Okay, N-9-A-R-B. Oh, by the way, that's right. He is once again assumed the duties as EC here in the, uh, Stevenson County. He succeeded Brandon K9 LOA who has stepped down. So once again, Tony N9 ARB is our EC here in Stevenson County. Uh, we'll put down his better hat. N9 TAB. The honorary check in. And one of the best guys in the whole world. He doesn't uh, check in that often, but he listens every Friday night. Richard in Belvedere, N. Nine, V, O, H, D, honorary check-in. And Justin, K, nine, F, E, O, H, D, honorary check-in. Okay. We got check-in our repeater chairman, uh, Kirk, K, E, nine, N. He's moved into his new acute age where he's not got his equipment set up yet. So, okay. Let's see. Uh, T D 9 L O A. Brandon, it's C on her. Check in. T D 9 O V J. John and McConnell. It's C on her. Check in. And, okay. Let's see. You know what? The heck of it? Mel, N, 9, R, P, N, H, C, honorary check -in. He's still in over at South St. Anthony Hospital. They, they had a, a problem with the paperwork, so he's not at a, a, a rehab facility as of yet. As soon as I find out any information about him, I'll definitely I'll let you know. Okay. Now the count stands at uh, uh, 38 check-ins. I'm now doing my honorary check-ins. Okay, at the time, at this time, any more stations want to check in the Friday Night Fund Net, please call now. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you what. I want to thank Dan, N9DCH, the trustee of this repair for allowing us to use this repair to hold the Friday night fund that where we can't use 6 one. I'm going to run down the list of stations we've checked in so far. W9JTC Jamie, Early Bird. 89SF, Scott, the beautiful Kishwaukee River Yacht Club, South of the Robert. He checked in uh, the net there. H9NW, K9QPL, KD9QDEP, K. D9 SBA, uh, KL7 JEB, H9 GO, K9 HKS, K9 KGT, K9 MEDD was recording this net, K D9 MAP, Kerry, WX9 RL, T Ricky, N9 SBJ, Scott, at the Rock River Yacht Club. <laughs> Next I want to thank uh, K9 RGG, Norman Orville, W9 GD. We'll put him down as an HC honorary check-in. Uh, the KFDX, of course, uh, that's uh, Gene Duncan. Of course, uh, Gary 
formerly K9 FM, hell holds that call. K9, K9, uh, WOQ, K9, uh, DDF, John and Elgin checking the Friday Night Fund at online, N9CNW, K9 EPGL, K9 YI, Scott Monroe checking on Simplex, NA9LE from North Ottawa, Illinois. Thank you for checking in. K9G, myself, K9G, Sarah, net control. KF9SD, Pat Warner checking on the Friday Night Fund at online, KD9SHT, KD9SAZ, Dan, N9, uh, NQD, Art, K9FLOD. N9GBP, uh, now my honorary check-ins. N9ARB, N9GAB, N9GO, K9, K9FEO, KE9N, K9LOA, KD9OBJ, uh, N9RPN, and AC9JZ. Uh, 38 check-ins. Same number of check-ins I had last week. Let's see. Okay, I had a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 33, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 3, 5, 3, 6, 3, 7, 38. Let's see now. Uh... Okay, I got I gotta figure out how many uh, on air check ins I had. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, in uh, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, uh, twenty six on air check ins, two uh, uh, online check ins, and uh, nine honorary check ins, a total of thirty eight check ins. Okay. Okay, be sure you tell your mothers, your fathers, your sons and daughters, your brothers and sisters, your aunts and uncles, your nieces, your nephews, uh, your in-laws, uh, your uh, grandparents, your in-laws, your neighbors across the street, down the street, next door. Be sure you tell your butcher, your baker, and your candlestick baker. Be sure you tell your used car dealer, your new car dealer. Be sure you tell the clerk behind the counter at your grocery store. Be sure be, the clerk behind the counter at your... Uh, convenience store, be sure you tell your bartenders, waiters, waitresses at your friends in the neighborhood, bars, restaurants, taverns, or pubs. Be sure you tell, them, tell the members of your local PTA or PTO. Be sure you tell your bank teller, your stockbroker, the clerk behind the counter at your post office, your mailman. Be sure you tell your priests, your ministers, your rabbis, your imams, your mullahs, and your ayatollahs. Be sure you tell your uh, be sure you tell your probation officer, your parole officer, and your uh, divorce lawyer. Be sure you tell your boyfriends, your girlfriends, your ex boyfriends, your ex girlfriends, your husbands, your wives, your ex husbands, your ex wives, your ex in laws, of course, your old ladies about Friday night funding. More check ins are better than that. Make sure you have a valid FCC license before you check in. Sorry, folks, we do not take check ins from jailbirds, jammers, potty mouths, crackheads, dope heads, potheads, uh, telemarketers, uh, uh, those of you who uh, take an eat at a sporting event, we don't take your check-ins. You don't back the blue, we don't take your check-ins. Sorry, folks, that's all there is to it. One moment, please. Okay. Uh, one moment, please. You know what? I gotta do something. Stand by hotline. Uh, this is K9G Sarah, the Friday Night Funder on the uh, K9R of Day Repair and Robert. That was Tom, W I 9 WTF, with checks on the Friday Night Funder at Hotline. 
He was just going to, in the match, he was just going to the fringe of the repeater. So he, I got that three hotline check-ins I got to the constant of 39 uh, check-ins. And I forgot to mention, we had a very successful cruise night. It was just like it was, uh, the, the, I don't think they missed a beat. There was big crowds. The cruise went well. They took a different, uh, got to see a lot of the old cars from the uh, 30s, 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. And uh, the cruise went well. They changed the they changed the cruise route, but that was a that was a good time. Well, I cooperated. Here's what I've got to do. The amateurs cold. The amateurs considerate. He never normally uses the air in such ways less than the pleasure of others. The amateurs loyal. He offers his loyalty, encouragement, and uh, support to his fellow radio amateurs. His local club, the American Radio Relay League, to which amateur radio is represented. The amateur is progressive. He keeps his station to press of science. It is well built and efficient. His operating practice is above reproach. The amateur is friendly. So slow and patient sending when requested. Uh, friendly advice and uh, counsel to the beginner. Kindly assistance, cooperation, and consideration for the interests of others. These are marks of the amateur spirit. Uh, the amateur is balanced. Radio is his hobby. He never allows him to interfere with any of his duties he owes to his home his job, his school, or his community. The amateur is patriotic. His knowledge and his station are always ready for the services of his country and his community. That's the amateur's code. As Tony and I and RB used to say, something to live by not only on the radio, but throughout life itself. Okay at this time. Are there any more stations who would like to check in the Friday Night Fund then? Please call now. Okay, one more. Let's see. K C nine O J P Bill H C on or H A. The count stands at forty check-ins. Okay, this is the last call for any stations who like to check in the Friday night fun net from anywhere in the region. What's we'll route traffic? Please call K nine G C R. Last call for Ranta Jaw. K D nine N W Y. AD9NWI, good evening, uh, long time no year, how you doing? I'm doing all right, Jimmy, I just uh, popped over to the truck real quick because I figured you'd be out of the net, thought I'd uh, jump in and bump your count one, count one more. Okay, sounds good, you're checking number 41. All right, sounds good, Jimmy, uh, sounds like a good net, you have a good night and... 89 NWI, I'll be clear. Okay, sounds good. We're at, uh, the question tonight is how do you get your friends to uh, get your uh, that ham radio license there? Do uh, you have any thoughts on that before I let you go? Uh, did you say how do you, how do you get your friends to get their ham license? Was that the question? USL, that's correct. Well, I don't know. Um, I got, uh, well, I got, I got my wife into it uh, to get her license at least, and I got a friend of mine to get his. But um, it was more just I think they saw what I could do with my radio and thought that'd be something fun to get into. So um, other than that, I don't, I don't know that I have too many ideas. Well, I understand. Okay. Hey, thank you for checking the Friday Night Fun Net. Enjoy your evening. Enjoy your weekend. Don't be a stranger. All right, sounds good, Jimmy. Good talking to you. Uh, KD9 NWY, back to nut. John G. Sharp, 73. Good night. Any more uh, last call for any stations while I'm checking the Friday Night Fun Net? Uh, uh, please call now. Well, tomorrow night at this time, that'll be my you'll be my first contact one year ago. I believe you are right, uh, 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 Rick. I think I, I, I remember that. A couple of times, I think you called me on the phone, uh, uh, too. I think it was on during a Friday night fun that I don't think your license has gone through yet. That was correct. 
Well, congratulations on your one-year anniversary. Of course, you were in this hobby before, but you got out of it for a while. But I'm glad you got back into it. Yeah, I'm having more fun right now than required by law with the hobby, that's for sure. Uh, just checking the cell phone here. I got my uh, new radio here coming tomorrow, it looks like. That's great. That's wonderful. What kind of radio are you getting? Oh, it's just a little uh, VHF, UHF, uh, two-meter FM deal there. It's, uh, it's uh, new old stock. Uh, what is it here? ICOM... Uh, ID 880H uh, D Star. Okay, that's great, Tom. Good. Hey, I almost forgot to mention that uh, I got September QST magazine in the mail yesterday. There's a main artic big article in there about the finding and fixing a power line noise. Oh, really? Well, that, 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 there, uh, I know a couple of ham operators that are plagued with that. One is Al down there in Rochelle there. Uh, he's, he's got to run a, uh, some sort of, uh, external, uh, antenna there, bring down the noise there. He might be interested in an article like that. Yeah, funny, I didn't think to mention it during the tech net portion. That, that, that'd be great. Oh, well, there's always another time for that, so. Hey, Ricky, uh, congratulations on what we'll call your one-year anniversary of uh, getting back into this hobby. You have a good night. We'll definitely talk to you down the hall. I'm sure we'll hear from you on the Sunday night uh, nets here. Uh, yeah, uh, I was thinking of something uh, about that magazine there. You're talking about electrical noise there in a QSD. That'd be a good topic to bring up sometime. Yeah, that'd be... I think that sounds like a good idea. We'll have to consider it sometime. Thanks. I think that's one of our biggest enemies is uh, electrical noise. Uh, it could be from a power line or within the house itself. Well, that... Who was it? I, wasn't it Brian K92DB? He was having a little problems with the electrical noise inside his house there too, but I think he solved it by turning off all his uh, lights, and that, that solved the problem. You got to be careful on some of these new LED bulbs you buy nowadays off the uh, off the shelf. I mean, you you might be paying a cheap price for them, uh, but uh, they're not really filtered. So you go and buy them LED bulbs, buy the buy or the buy the premium quality ones. There, it's going to cost you a little bit more, but uh, you'll have less of a hassle with them. <laughs> oh yeah, I hear you. You know, I think they're still manufacturing some of the old incandescent bulbs there too, because sometimes I can I can buy them at the local grocery store here. Maybe maybe it's a good idea. Maybe go back to using them. Down here in the basement, I, I've got uh, the basement equipped with uh, oh, they're they're uh, expensive LED bulbs, but uh, they're uh, they put out light equivalent to a hundred watt light bulb incandescent one here, and uh, I get no noise from these guys down here whatsoever. But uh, yeah, some of these uh, on the market that you buy are, are absolutely terrible. Uh, whatever happened to the underwriter's laboratory? I thought they used to check on all this stuff here at one time, but uh, now that the uh, the uh, doors are open for imports here, uh, that seems to be a thing gone uh, gone by and in the past nowadays. They just uh, import any kind of junk they can find. Well, ain't that the truth? I hear you on <laughs> that one. <laughs> okay, Rick, hey. Again, thank you for checking in, and thank you for all you do on this hobby, too, especially on this, on this one year you've been back on the air. So, okay. Have a good night. We'll definitely, I'm sure we'll hear from you this coming uh, Sunday night, on the, especially on the Green County net there. Yeah, yeah, I'll be there. 
Easter. Catch you later. Okay, sounds good. Last call for any stations who want to check in the Friday night fun net uh, with the route traffic, please call case on GCR. Last call for Ratchet Talk. <laughs> All right, yeah, my now check in number 42. My final honor, uh, my final check in will be this K9 TSU, formerly K9 TSU. Okay, uh, HC for honorary check in. So I got 42 check ins. Okay, uh, tune in again next week. Uh, it was another successful Friday night fun that folks are, I'm glad to. Larry, uh, K9KCT picked a good topic, and it was about the, uh, well, what do you do to get your friends to uh, get your ham radio licenses? We'll do it again. Uh, if you have any suggestions for any topics for Friday Night Fun, then definitely let me know, either on the radio or on the hotline. Uh, with that, uh, tune in again uh, next week, same time. Well, hope we will be back on 6-1. But anyway, tune in again next week for another edition of Friday Night Fun. And until then, this is Jim, K9GCR. Net Control of Friday Night Fun Net. Now goes down this Friday, August 20th, 20, 21 edition of Friday Night Fun Net. And return the repairs of frequency normal at radio use at 10.48 p.m. Central uh, uh, Daylight Time. I believe it's uh, uh, three, uh, zero, uh, uh, three hours, uh, 40 minutes, uh, uh, 48 minutes Zulu time with a grand total of 42 check-ins. Uh, this is now closed. Repair is now open for normal app radio use. Seven threes, everybody. This is case sign GCR. Uh, uh, seven threes to all, and to all a good night. <laughs>